Hi, my name is Anna Strait, and I'm here today to talk about my independent study project for this year. I wanted to see how miniature horses compare to dogs for service work and training service tasks. So according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, miniature horses are the only animals other than dogs that can be used as service or assistance animals. My hypothesis was that using positive reinforcement to train a miniature horse for assistance tasks should have no significant differences from training a dog using positive reinforcement. I decided to use an autoethnography as my method uh, because this allowed me to analyze my own experiences um, rather than trying to go out and um, watch other people uh, in the cultural group that I was trying to study. So previous research on this topic is basically non-existent. Um, I looked up uh, miniature horse research um, training and on miniature service horses and I found nothing at all. Um, there is some research on service dogs, but I decided that that wasn't really pertinent to my research um, because I wanted to go more the equine route. So for collecting data, I used training logs uh, that were written um, in which I recorded uh, the task I was asking the animal to do, as well as the treats that I used, the time of day, the weather, that kind of thing. I also used uh, video recordings of training sessions. So for both of my animals that I had participate in my research, I used positive reinforcement training. Um, and my participants, I used one horse and one dog. So the horse is Stella. Um, some of you may have seen her around campus. She's a 17 year old registered miniature horse. Um, I bought her at the beginning of last semester for use in this project um, and for future use myself if uh, she didn't get rehomed to do service work. Um, she lives in my yard on campus. My other participant is Molly. Molly is a one and a half year old pit bull mix uh, from the Lewis and Clark Humane Society. Um, she is living on Carroll campus currently as a uh, junior program dog. And her foster mom allowed me to use her for this research, which was very nice of her. Um, the tasks trained varied slightly from animal to animal. Um, so some of, as you'll see, some of them are the same and some of them are pretty different. That's because I did psychiatric service tasks with both of them, but then Stella did some mobility as well. Um, and Molly did a few basic service tasks um, that could be for any disability that are more dog specific. So Stella learned left and right, which is uh, where she lines her body up on the left or right side of my body, depending on what I've asked her for. Um, this can be useful for positioning in uh, a public setting, as well as um, being in the correct position if she needs to, uh, for me, if she needs, if I need her to um, steady me for mobility work. Um, so for block, uh, she would walk um, her body up in front of me parallel to my body so that I had to stop moving. Um, this was perfect for steadying work uh, for mobility, which brings us to our next task, which is steady. Um, so when I ask her for steady, I place one hand on her back uh, in whatever position she is near me, and I say steady and she needs to not move her feet until I have moved my hand. Um, that's a mobility specific task. She also learned help, which is um, what I have called object retrieval for her. Uh, so if I'm walking along and I drop something, I just have to say, oh, Stella, can you help me? And she'll go pick it up for me. Um, we're also working on stand where I just ask her not to move and she is supposed to stay there until I have told her that she can move again. Um, and finally, Stella has learned an anxiety alert where she comes up next to me or in front of me um, and she nudges my hand when she notices a change in my heart rate um, or 
my breathing. So for Molly, we, I really wanted to do a couple dog specific things. So one of which is deep pressure therapy. Um, some minis can do deep pressure therapy using their head and neck, but it's more difficult to train. Um, so for Molly, we use the command lap for that. So I would sit on the ground or in a chair and I would say Molly lap. And she is supposed to come up and put her front paws on my lap um, and sort of lay across my thighs. Um, she also learned left and right like Stella did, uh, as well as tuck, which is where she goes under a desk or a table in front of me um, and lays down by my feet to keep her out of the way if she we were to be in a public place. Um, she learned heel, which is very important. Stella pretty much had a decent heel already when we started, which is why that's not on her list. Um, she also, Molly also learned to settle, uh, which is sort of like a down, except it's the cue lets the animal know that they're going to be there for a while and to really just get comfortable. Um, and then Molly is also working on object retrieval, but that one she's having a little bit of difficulty with, so it's a work in progress. So I wanted to do a training example of each of them. So I have a small paragraph here from my training log, um, and then I'm going to play this video of Stella's training progression. Hopefully it loads. So here she's performing left and I was waiting until she got into the correct position before treating her. So as you can see, I used the treat to lure her slightly forward to get her into a better block position. There's a better study. She moved the first time, but the second time she got it really well. So here, this was just a fun thing. We were learning to target. Um, so I wanted her to touch the little ball on the end of the stick. Um, and this can be used for a variety, as a base for a variety of different tasks. So we're gonna move on now. Um, here is Molly. We're gonna do a training example of Molly as well. Molly, I wanted to more show the progression of her healing um, from the first day I worked with her until uh, a more recent clip where she's doing considerably better, as you will see. So here she gets pretty distracted and she really doesn't want to come back to me, um, even for food at first. There, now she's interested again. So here I'm outside using a uh, peanut butter Kong to reward her, which she loves. And the person taking the video is her foster mom, which is why she gets distracted right there. But you can see she comes back a lot more quickly because we've been working on this a lot. And here we're working on our off-leash heel in the classroom with these desks as obstacles. Um, and she has done very well with this. I was very proud of her. All right, so for discussion, um, I know we're not, because SURF is online, uh, people aren't gonna be able to actually ask questions. And so I wanted to answer some of the 
questions I thought people might have um, about my research. So um, some of the basics would be like, what is the easiest task to train for each of them? Um, Stella really enjoyed um, touch, which I didn't actually show here. Um, it's similar to what we saw in the video where she was touching the target, except the target is your hand. Um, and she really enjoys that. Um, Molly, what was Molly's easiest task to train? Uh, probably heel. Molly really enjoyed um, heel with peanut butter. If we use peanut butter, she's really good at that. Um, difficult, most difficult task for each of them. For Stella, it's 100% stand. Um, she really doesn't think stand is a thing she should ever have to do. And so I really have to give her a lot of treats and really make it worth her while to actually do that. Uh, for Molly, it's lap. She really didn't want to sit on me at first, which I found interesting. Um, but eventually, using a lot of peanut butter and a lot of hot dogs, um, I convinced her that it was a good idea. So which animal was the easiest to train overall? Um, both, I guess, would be my answer to that. They're, they were both relatively easy to train, um, considering other animals that I've worked with in the past and other animals that are even in the program this year. Um, I wouldn't say one was easier or harder than the other. They were just different. Uh, so where are they going now? Um, that's, I thought you guys might be interested in what they're doing afterwards. So Stella was meant to be a service animal if I felt that she was capable of doing so. Um, I have realized in the past year that that's really not her thing um, and she would be happier doing something more active. Uh, and with more people. So Stella is um, staying here over the summer to have her baby. She is uh, pregnant, which was a surprise to me. Um, and then she and I and potentially baby are going home to Virginia um, to continue our training and potentially be a therapy animal instead. Um, Molly dog, uh, as part of the, the um, anthrozoology program, she was never meant to be a true service dog, and so she um, is being adopted out at the end of the year with the rest of the foster dogs, and actually I have been allowed to adopt her because I'm a graduating senior, um, and so she also is coming home to Virginia with me, which I'm very excited about. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in my discussion is service dog washout rates because neither of my animals are becoming true service animals. I did want to mention that uh, washout rates are pretty high for service animals. It's difficult to find um, exact numbers because a lot of organizations would rather not publish those numbers because they don't look very good. Um, but what I could find, uh, it seemed like about 50% of um, specifically bred raised and trained service dogs, like dogs line bred for this, um, wash out or have to do career changes uh, where they either end up in a pet home or doing some other kind of work. Um, and then owner trained service animals, there is no numbers at all for that, but it is generally believed that washout rates are considerably higher um, for owner trained service animals. <laughs> So in conclusion, um, I just want to put it out there, train the animal, not the species. Um, the species doesn't matter. You just find what works for that animal. Um, and even within species, animals are very different and will work for different things. And um, some things are harder and some things are easier and it's not necessarily species specific. Um, so train what you have in front of you, basically. Um, so future research, I would love to continue my research with um, miniature horses doing service tasks. I'd love to do some sort of survey of current handlers if possible. Um, and I'd love to try training again, starting with a much younger animal um, to see if that makes a difference for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you.